Welcome to the Vol Bros. My name is Evan. This is my brother, Rustin, and we are two Vol Bros who are actually bros in real life. Uh, we got to take on Dollywood yesterday. It was a lot of fun. We did not get to see Dolly, unfortunately. Uh, but Dolly, if you got our message or our, our you saw our tweet because we tagged you in it, seriously, I think Dollywood and the Vol Bros is a match made in heaven. We are two islands in a stream, Dolly. <laughs> uh no uh so yeah we should we should I, I was trying to remember the next line but it totally left my mind um so definitely a sponsorship made in heaven there uh welcome everybody we got sec tournament action happening as we speak and mississippi state and texas a m played each other earlier today uh, not texas a m what am i talking about mississippi state and lsu and Mississippi State defeated LSU, so Tennessee will now play Mississippi State tomorrow, Friday, at 1 o'clock. Um, so we're here to preview that, and we're really excited because to give us a little, maybe a little bit of preview that we don't typically think about, like what it's like behind the scenes, we have Tyler with us tonight. Tyler, welcome. Glad you're with us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, Tyler, can you let everybody know what years you were in uh, the athletic department, what you did there, that kind of thing? Yeah, so I started my tenure in 2016, the fall of 2016. Uh, went through the uh, spring semester of 2018, uh, so approximately three years, give or take, there. Uh, the first um, four months or so, I served in athletics and marketing, which is less travel based and what more home based in knoxville uh, for athletic events that are at home and then i served in media relations uh, for the final two and a half years which is more uh, statistics social media uh, pr for the athletic programs which can involve travel depending on the time of the year so yeah so in that in that arena did you ever get to go to a sec men's basketball tournament uh yes so um obviously it's been in nashville recently so i would i would say for some teams it is more of a exhaustive trip than than others tennessee is thankfully i think one of those that is not as exhaustive uh so texas a&m for instance is flying there uh tennessee i would assume is not still uh, flying there they're busing uh but yeah so, so it's kind of a, a different story for for different teams and i'm sure we'll get into more of that what goes in uh, for each team um, playing in a tournament like this. Well, we already got some comments coming in. Welcome, Carl. Good to have you with us, buddy. Carl said, howdy, bros. Go, go Vols, absolutely. Uh, Carl said, Ole Miss going to need a miracle. Shooting has been bad. So Ole Miss is playing right now. Uh, let's see. Nick, welcome, Nick. Good to have you, bud. Uh, he said he is in the house. Absolutely. He said, we need to even it up with Mississippi State. I totally agree. And it's a revenge game tomorrow for sure. And Carl said, Tyler gave us the juice. Absolutely. Uh, he is, he's ready to roll. Uh, it's going to be a fun conversation. So, so Tyler, <clears throat> I guess first, Rustin, let's talk about, and Tyler, let's talk about the, the opponent for tomorrow. We have Mississippi State. Obviously, this was a loss during the regular season. We only got to play them one time, so we never had a chance at a revenge uh, situation, um, be, uh, you know, beating them on our home court. We never got that opportunity. What do you all think is important, Rustin? We'll start with you, and then Tyler. What do you What do y'all think is important for the Vols tomorrow? I would just say balance. the The first time we played them, it was two months ago, and we're a very different team since then. But um, the first time we played them, it was Dalton and Zakai, and nobody else. Um, no one else showed up and played well. So um, you know, I think I think we've learned a lot about ourselves. I think we've learned a lot about who gives us the best matchups. The first time we played them, Josh Hubbard had a huge night. I would expect this time we'll see a steady dose of Santi and Jemai on him. And so I don't expect him to have quite as much ease of scoring as he did the last time. Um, but the biggest thing is uh, Jonas has to play. Either Jonas or Tobe, one or the other has to show up and play well. Because last time we played him, Tolu Smith did whatever he wanted. And, and we didn't stop him. So, you know, I think if we get if we just get a typical effort like we've been getting the last month, I, I don't think this will be much of a game. I think we'll handle them pretty well. Um, but, you know, somebody besides Dalton and Zakai has to show up. Tyler, what about you? 
Uh, yeah, I would say Tennessee has to bring physicality to the court. I mean, uh, I think, you know, last time in Starkville, Mississippi State pretty much physically handled Tennessee on the boards. Uh, and that's something Tennessee can't let happen this time. Um, if you if you'd listen to uh, an interview one of the assistants gave, uh, they said that Mississippi State was the most physical team that they would play all year. Uh, so Tennessee got beat on the boards. Uh, Russell already mentioned it was just Sakai and Dalton that showed up. Um, so so we need Jonas, we need Tobey to to come in and, and make some noise early and and uh, match the the physicality of Mississippi State. So you all already said the literally the exact thing that I was thinking of. You know, last last game they played, Mississippi State just beat them up inside, and so clearly we got to have Tobey and and Jonas play better. Let me, I think we could all agree that. Tobey is certainly playing better now than he was two months ago. Can we all agree mm-hmm. on that? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what and about Jonas? Just, yeah. Do you think he's? Do you think Jonas is playing better now than he was in early January? I think offensively is about the same. I think I think defensively he has learned to be a little more physical. I think that Tolu Smith, Smith matchup early kind of taught him that he better become more physical or it's going to be a long year for him. Um, so I think I think he has learned how to be more physical. He does still have moments, though, where he kind of backs down, and, and I, I don't want to see that anymore. Um, he's done it a lot recently. Um, he kind of picks and chooses when he's going to play hard, and um, you know I would like to see consistency in that. Carl said, crazy as it sounds, a lot of teams this year have been more physical. That's normally the Vols MO. Uh, and, and, you know, Tyler, when you mentioned a second ago that uh, the the Mississippi State bigs out-rebounded us, I'm sure that's not something that Rick Barnes was happy about. <laughs> no, no, not uh, at all. Typically not his, uh, his, his favorite cup of tea there. So I'm sure that'll be an emphasis going into tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Carl said, is it better to, oh, we're going to star that. We're going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. Uh, Mina Lackey. Hey, hey, I like that that handle. I still haven't made that shirt. I need to make that shirt. Uh, She said, evening, bros. Uh, The chat and Tyler. She late again. Hey, no problem. We were late, too, so we're good. Uh, She she said, it's going to be fun. And uh, Nick said, this is the best four weeks of the year for me. Oh, man, I agree, Nick. Uh, Let's see. Next Next Thursday through Saturday may be the four best days of the whole year, athletically speaking, <laughs> especially Thursday, Friday, or I guess it'd be Thursday through Sunday. Um, Mon- Monday through Wednesday is the highest number of vasectomies scheduled every year. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a proven fact. Are you for real right now? Proven. Yes. Yeah. 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 Monday through hey, Wednesday. This is not- the Monday through Wednesday before the first weekend of March Madness are the highest number of vasectomies scheduled every year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is this is the hard hitting information that you get when you tune in the vault. Right. Folks. Behind Google the scenes, insider stuff. Google yeah. it. I'm not joking. That's, that's, that's factual evidence. <laughs> Madison, welcome. We're so glad you're with us. She said, "Not Tennessee related, but love the people mover hat." Yeah, thank you. I love this hat. It says, "I conquered the people mover on it." Um, <laughs> I, it's my I, life one of for our, everyone who's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, when, uh, so I went on the Wild Eagle at Dollywood yesterday for the first time ever. <laughs> that is not the people mover. <laughs> it is not, not the people mover. That is accurate. No, it is not. <laughs> that is accurate. Um, my wife, uh, this, this is my wife. I actually, I should have said, shouldn't have said that. One of our sponsors, Ginger Marvelous Mouse Travels. <laughs> uh, she is a travel agent and she does Disney destinations, uh, Universal Parks and Resorts, Sandals and Beaches, Royal Caribbean, uh, all, all the things. And so, um, we're actually doing, if, if you're in a marvelous or, you know, March Madness type brackets, we're doing a every year she does one in March called Marvelous Madness. And right now we're, tomorrow and, and Saturday will be the round of 32 and it's best table service restaurants at Disney. So y'all can check her out at gingermmt.com. Here's her website, or you can just go to youtube.com slash ginger MMT. Uh, there's her channel. So a lot of fun. We love it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, the people mover and the wild Eagle, uh, definitely not the same. <laughs> 
Um, it was it was a lot so of fun up there. In my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's the closest thing I've ever experienced to a plane crash. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> so once, but I think Rustin will agree. Once you finish that first drop on the Wild Eagle, and from that point forward, man, it's just so much fun. It's so smooth. Uh, mm-hmm. It's it's a blast. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't couldn't wait to get off. <laughs> so smooth. Yeah, so smooth. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Carl said the guys can stay home and watch March Madness to recoup. Yep, absolutely. Carl said she's above your pay grade. Totally agree, Carl. Uh, 100%. Uh, 100%, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think this is Zach. Uh, Zach said, I just saw who we got putting up at least 90. Uh, Zach, is that you? I think it is. I think the ZW at the end gives it away. Yeah. Um, Zach, he he said we're playing Mississippi State, so we're going to put up 90-plus points. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. that'd be awesome. If they do, they win. I think that'd be a safe. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, no question. Uh, Zach said, "No, it's not. Oh, this isn't Zach." Well, then who oh. is it? I think it, I still think it's Zach. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so, Zach. Somewhat vol-related content. Future Tennessee head coach Cam English just upset Creighton. <laughs> Future head coach. <laughs> oh man, Rustin is already making the pitch. He's he is. We're going to have groomers so for basketball. Just so we're clear. <laughs> just so we're clear. Rick Barnes Rustin is not retiring. Is, <laughs> yes, he is not trying to push out Rick Barnes, just so we're clear. Rustin is a huge Rick Barnes fan. Man, I didn't say he was retiring. Everyone. I didn't say he was gone. I just said I believe the next person will be Kim English. And I think it'll be relatively soon. I, relatively soon could mean two years. It could mean three years. <laughs> But I do think in the near future, Rick Barnes will retire. And I believe Kim English will be next. (laughs) And his team just upset Creighton and knocked them out of the Big East tournament. And probably solidified themselves as a tournament team. They probably just moved off the bubble and got in. That Lenardi thinks so. He does. Um, So Mina, like he said, that statistic has me befuddled. For real surgeries or excuses for work? <laughs> yes. Google it. Google it. It's an obscene Don't number. Don't Google it's it, like, actually. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's an insane <laughs> number. It's like, it's something like 70 to 75% of vasectomies every year are scheduled in the Monday to Wednesday before March Madness. It's crazy. It, it's some enormous number. This may be the best super chat we have ever received in the history of our show. <laughs> Carl, thank you so much. Oh man. <laughs> the $20 is great, but the comment is even better. <laughs> For those who might be listening to the cuz we do have about uh I mean the vast majority of people watch it uh and actually our last show was the most watched like simultaneous live stream show we've ever had. Uh but so there are some people who uh, they we got about 27, I think, on average per week or per show who listen through the audio podcast. So if you're listening and you're not seeing the screen right now, uh, Carl gave a $20 super chat with the comment vasectomy fund. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, uh Mina, like, are you asking why would this be? I, I'm. It's. Is, if, why it's would this simple. be the biggest three days? It's simple. It gives you a built-in excuse to call into work and take personal days on Thursday and Friday so that you can stay home and watch the tournament. <laughs> the first two days of the NCAA tournament are the best two days of the whole tournament. So, yeah. uh, Carl agrees with you. He said Kim English after Rick Barnes would be awesome. I agree. Brennan, hey, welcome, Brennan. Good to have you, buddy. He said, Rustin, if you think the Wild Eagle's bad, you should have rode the Thunderhead. I still have to go to the chiropractor due to that roller coaster. <laughs> I don't, I don't mind speed. I don't mind, um, I don't mind, you know, the ones that jerk you all over the place and you kind of fly around in the seat and afterwards your whole body hurts. That, that those don't bother me. It's the incredibly steep incline at the beginning of the Wild Eagle that, at its highest point, is two hundred and ten feet off the ground. And, um, then you just, and I think it's honestly intentionally slow. Like they want you to think about what your death's going to feel like, um, (laughs) as you're going up and 
and then you get to the top and you just free fall. You just fall <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> and no one seems to think this is problematic. Like, I feel like they should have warned people with heart conditions before they got on. Like, <laughs> people should die on that ride. <laughs> Okay. We don't want them to die, but even no. people might die. But I don't. I don't see how it's avoidable. Honestly, like <laughs> you get to 200, 210 feet off the ground and then just free fall. That's not okay. Uh, so if I had to, okay, totally off subject. But if I had to power rank the roller coasters at Dollywood, uh, I'm going Tennessee Tornado number one. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, Tyler yeah. agrees. I love it, man. That's the uh, fastest ride there. Fastest roller coaster there. Yeah. Um, and then Wild Eagle would be number two, in my opinion. Um, once and never again. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, however many roller coasters are there, I can't remember how many there are, but the last one would be Mystery Mind, in my opinion. It's, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Nothing close. The new one, so we didn't get to ride Dragon Flyers yesterday. I want to go back and ride it. It seems super short, but um we didn't get to ride it but i want to um the big bear mountain it was a long coaster i loved it like it was i liked the length uh, you know it it wasn't like a like tennessee tornado is awesome but it's really really short um Mm -hmm. big bear mountain it was just it was great so super super good job dolly for that uh so there's more vasectomy comments coming in (laughs) mino mino likey is 100 percent correct uh so she says you know you could just lie and just say you're getting it done and then just take <laughs> take no, I'm up further take, down uh but then uh the, oh she was yeah she was agreeing that not that not with the fall and then she said i'd rather have the surgery than the free fall <laughs> correct yeah i'm a, I'm a roller coaster fan so is rustin i just don't think he liked the 210 foot drop <laughs> no no well, so we got a basketball game tomorrow, and uh, Tyler mentioned that. Uh, okay, Evan asked a question. We're going to come back to that, Evan. That's a good yeah. question. That's college. Football. I was about to say, if, to if, if people haven't turned off the podcast yet, if you're listening, if you're if you're like, well, <laughs> they're supposed to talk about basketball today, but all I've heard is the second season about <laughs> Dollywood coasters are not so great. I'm the, the, so if you're still here, thank you for for hanging <laughs> in there with us. It's called <laughs> diversity and <laughs> PR power. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a very vasectomy heavy show so far. <laughs> Brent said this is hey, one, one of the best shows, shows of the day. day. That's, a, that's, a, that's incredible. <laughs> it's like a car wreck. Uh, you can't turn away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, Tyler, you mentioned that you, you got you, the fall of 2016 was your first semester as part of the mm-hmm. athletic department. Is that correct? That's correct. So Rick Barnes was hired in 2015. So mm-hmm. you were there for the whole Rick Barnes era. I mean, as far as like when you were there, it was just Rick Barnes. It wasn't Donnie Tindall. It wasn't mm-hmm. Butch, uh, not Whoa. Butch, uh, <laughs> Bruce Pearl. <laughs> yeah, let's say. Oof. Yeah, oof. Um, so, uh, oh, Carl said, now this would be interesting. Okay, if you had a vasectomy on a roller coaster. <laughs> What pe- people who are chiming in right tuning in right now are like, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't think Dolly would approve that ride. Yeah, they, Dolly wouldn't approve. <laughs> oh man, that really would be a wild eagle. Um, yeah. and, uh, oh man. So, uh, so Rick Barnes' first year in the SEC. <laughs> yeah. So Rick Barnes came in 2015. So Tyler, you've been there the whole time with Rick Barnes. And so this, you mentioned the second half of your tenure. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. This oh, is the man. best comment of the night. Uh, Mina, like he said, I'm dying here. Don't tell Zach. <laughs> Rustin is open to can of worms that I don't know that can be closed. I think yeah, they, they're just like I'm spewing everywhere throughout the aisles of, the, of, our, of our virtual store here. All I that did was amazing. state a fact. I just <laughs> yeah. simply stated a fact. <laughs> she said that would close the park if if you had never seen one of those. Um. <laughs> so, the uh, second half of your of your tenure with the the Vols Athletic Department, uh, you were in media relations, and so you got mm-hmm. to go to the tournament. 
Um, tell us, tell us what would be so like they play tomorrow. Now, yeah. obviously, they're just in Nashville, so they're just going to drive over on a bus. But uh, what would the day before, like, what would today be like for the Vols? Well, you kind of get a snapshot of it through Instagram. So Kellen Heiser and our social media team do an amazing job of giving fans as much inside content as they can without giving the whole thing away. Uh, but so they probably rolled in. Uh, they had uh, practice at the venue. So before uh, the session start uh, for the day, the teams that have not played yet or are playing the next day will get a practice slot. Um, so, so you saw some of that on Instagram and then really the focus is maintaining a routine, maintaining a schedule, making sure the guys are rested. So, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, the schedules matter so much, you know, Mississippi state played today, Tennessee has not played a basketball game t- since Saturday. So you have tired, but fresher legs, Mississippi state against Tennessee who has practiced, but has not played. And it, for me, it's just there's just no simulation there. Like the, the atmosphere, the bands, the cheer squad, the noise, the TV, all all the things that are external uh, to the players. It's hard to simulate that in a practice. So uh, I'm not saying they will, uh, but I, w- I would not be surprised if we come out a little slow tomorrow. Just because I mean they haven't played in a week, and Mississippi State has played, and uh, so that's something you know that to to take into effect as as one of the top seeds. You know, Kentucky may have the same issue. Uh, playing, you know, the winner of Georgia or Florida tomorrow. So, all right. So, I, I got a question based off of what you just said because I think this is a good point. You know, uh, dude for uh, Mississippi State, can't think of his last name. He hit two threes in the closing seconds Hubbard. of that game. Hubbard, thank you. Uh, that dude was incredible in the last few seconds. Um, hey, Zach, I saw your comment. Yeah, we're going to come back to you, buddy. Uh, I want to I hear what you got to say. So, um, you know, he, he came off a, a screen and just stepped right into a three is beautiful, beautiful shot. So he's obviously feeling it right now. And so that that will that will carry over into tomorrow, I'm sure. Um, Tennessee, they got to they got to shake off potentially a little bit of rust coming out. However. Do you think the you know, in the in the last 10 minutes of the game, the fact that Tennessee has not yet played and the fact that Mississippi State will by that point, we'll have played two games within 24 hours. Do you think that's going to benefit Tennessee? And both of you can answer this. Do you think that's going to benefit Tennessee in the in the especially in that last media timeout with four minutes left in the game? From that point forward, do you think that Tennessee will be fresher and, and more ready to go by that point? You can go first, Tyler. Um, I think so, especially because what. I'm looking for is physicality from Tennessee. Uh, so I'm so I'm looking for the bigs to crash the boards. I'm looking to 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 draw fouls in the paint. Uh, I'm looking to uh, out physical Mississippi State at what they do best. Um, so again, I think uh, there are benefits to finishing well in the regular season. A lot of people say of basketball, oh well, the regular season really is not that important as long as you win enough games to get to the postseason. Well, I would say in in a case like tomorrow. Uh, being a top four seed matters, getting that double by matters. And I think Tennessee in the second half will show why it matters. Uh, and Mississippi State, while a great team and they'll be in the tournament, um, it, it'll show, I think, just long story short. I think we're going to learn a lot about how Rick Barnes views this tournament by how they come out tomorrow. Um, I think if they come out and go – we're going to play the way we always do. We're going to fly up and down the floor and go as fast as we possibly can. It's hard to do that three days in a row. Um, you know, but if that's, if that's how they come out, then I think the philosophy is we're going to play as hard and fast as we possibly can and just see what happens. Um, if they, you know, and, and kind of be okay with if we run out of gas in the second half against Auburn and we get to go home early, okay, so be it. If they come out and they're real methodical and they're playing a little slower, um, I think Rick Barnes is saying we're going to control tempo, we're going to stay fresh, and we're going to see if we can play three games in three days. Um, you know, so I think the first 10 minutes will actually tell us a lot about what the philosophy is for the weekend. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see. Tyler, I have a follow-up question on something you just said because every every college coach is typically one of two ways. Um, you know, that day before a game at a tournament, it typically you got two options. You've got that time in the gym before all the games that day. And some coaches are superstitious and they're like, we're going to run through all of our stuff. We're going to go over our scouting report. We're going to mimic everything as much as possible on the court live so that we can get a feel for what it feels like and looks like in this gym. There's other coaches that are like, nope, just roll the balls out, go shoot around, get a feel for the court, take all the game shots you would typically take. And then when we get back to the hotel, we're going to rent a ballroom, close the doors and do our walkthrough in there where nobody can see it. Which which camp does Rick Barnes fall in? I feel like the latter, uh, because the latter involves trusting his guys more. Uh, so you know, you saw, you saw the example of Santi, you know, a couple of games ago, where you know he lets he, he let Santi drop drop the play at Alabama, I think it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so so for the huge three, um, but but I think that's that's how he ro- that's how he rolls. I mean, he he is a he's a man of faith. Uh, so I mean, he he's not I wouldn't say superstitious or anything. I mean he he's been doing this a long time, fellas. Uh, and uh, he's 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 been successful everywhere he's been. Uh, he's been successful here. Uh, he's the best thing to happen to Tennessee basketball. Uh, I tell you, I told Chris Walker, the FCA chaplain, I was like, I got emotional as, as we won in, at, at South Carolina at the SEC regular season title because I remember the the twenty sixteen seventeen season we got beat by thirty in that gym with an undersized Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams. So we, and they were babies. We didn't have mm-hmm. anybody. I mean, we, we had nobody. We got ran out of the gym. But to have, it, to have enough horses, to have enough people uh, to go in that in a hostile environment against a really good team uh, and, and win and, and, you know, kind of really never seemed to lose control. Like, like South Carolina made their runs, but Tennessee never really lost the, the mojo in that game. And I think – I think that's who who Coach Barnes is. I think whether you're playing at Vanderbilt, where the baselines are are the benches, um, or you're in Bridgestone, where you know fifteen thousand people, I, I think he is who he is, and I think that's why uh, that's why guys like Dalton choose to spend his one COVID or one transfer uh, portal year with him, as is because he's going to coach him hard. He's going to stick to what he knows, and um, it'll fall where it falls. So let's fast forward to the end of the game. Okay, so Tennessee wins tomorrow. They beat Mississippi State. Short turnaround, got to come back and play the next day, probably against Auburn. What happens post game? How do they how do they get these guys the treatment and therapy they need to come back the next day? Well, a variety of things happen. So guys like me are in charge of getting Coach Barnes to the post game and or, or reporting room or whatever. So uh, he and whoever the media relations director, so Tom Sokoviak at the time, would pick two or three players, usually the players that performed the best, to be interviewed by the media. Uh, it, while all this is going on, the ops director is making sure meals are there to, to get them kind of fed after the game. Um, the whoever's running scout for the next game, so for tomorrow's Mississippi State. So today they were they were you know conversing with another team that has film in Mississippi State. Tennessee will probably watch the the first game, uh, but they'll also probably get some film from a recent opponent. Uh, so I'm just assuming maybe Kentucky or or somebody that Mississippi State played close recently. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of variables that are happening, which is which for me one of the things about being behind the scenes that was so cool is there's so many moving pieces. Uh, you know, I was at the ACC tournament in D- down in D.C. today, and just the amount of things that are going on at the same time, all to make this big, huge event work, especially for the team uh, personnel. Uh, it, it's really, it's really fascinating. So yeah, so there's there's a whole bunch going on at one time, and it is a quick turnaround. I mean, it's 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 quick. So where do the where do the trainers do their treatment? Do they have to set up makeshift treatment rooms at the hotel, or will Bridgestone let them use their facilities? Uh, probably both and. Um, I would say, and I think this may maybe a more player preference thing. Some people like getting taped up before they go to the arena. Uh, I know I can remember uh, the Admiral, if I remember correctly, likes going to the arena in his shorts already, like not not his jersey, but he would always go in his shorts. Um, so so guys like that would probably prefer to get taped at the hotel. Um, Does not matter? Probably not. Uh, but again, for them, you know, it's whatever makes them the most comfortable and in their element. So yeah. 
They're not superstitious. They're just a little stitious. They're, they're, yeah, they're just a little stitious. <laughs> but Coach Barnes is not superstitious or stitious. He's just, oh. he's just him. <laughs> Uh, Carl said, originally thought Rick Barnes was too nice. Always wanted to fire a fire and brimstone coach. But Barnes and Heupel has swayed me to the cooler side, but loving watching Vitello get fired up. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll just Carl, say you've not seen Coach Barnes in practice. That's all I'll say. <laughs> if you say Coach Barnes is not fiery, just watch him in practice and, and you'll think he's fiery. <laughs> uh, he said that he thinks that the, the short turnaround for Mississippi State favors the Vols. Rest is what they mean. Mr. Jones said we have Connect Four, so we're going to the Final Four. I hope so. Zach said, I'm looking for DK to score 50 points tomorrow. That would be amazing. Uh, that would be incredible for the SEC Player of the Year to do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Evan asked a question about Coach Barnes. He said, is there an uneasiness with Rick Barnes in any tournament play as a coach? Uh, well, I think if you were to ask Vol Twitter, yes. <laughs> But, yes, um, yeah, I, I, know, I know the fan answer is yes. Rusty, you can give your take. It's Jimmy's and Joe's. It all comes down to I Jimmy's agree. and Joe's. It, you know, coaches coaches will put – good coaches will get put players in positions to be successful, but at that point it's on players. And, and I think we have the talent depth in our first eight to play with anybody. Um, so NCAA – well, let me ca- put a caveat on this. NCAA tournament, it's all about the draw and the players. So I don't have any uneasiness at all. I don't care about the SEC tournament. <laughs> I just don't. Um, if we lose to Mississippi State tomorrow, I'll be going, awesome. Let's get an extra day of rest. Let's head back. Um, could not care less. So Mr. Jones agrees with me. He said players make the coach, not the other way around. And, I mean, there's a little bit. Of the other way around to it as well but yeah. um but I, I totally understand what you're saying uh mr jones said we've never had a connect before either but he has had a kevin durant and he didn't make a final four either so would you tell me that kevin durant and dj augustine are not good basketball players and he didn't have yeah. a good team I, I i don't i don't think i would say that so i i, I think like Rustin said i mean the matchup is is everything so yeah um, and then Carl made a good point. He said, uh, Barnes has never missed a shot. You know, the players do that. Yeah. Um, did you see the analytics? Did you see the analytics on number one seeds going to the final four versus number two? Hmm. It was fascinating. So number one seeds, if you look at the span of the NCAA tournament, number one seeds make it to the final four 39% of the time. Number two seeds make it 21% of the time. So there's an 18% gap chance better if you're a one seed over a two seed. Um, so matchups definitely matter. Uh, Carl liked the story. I believe that was the one you told about the South Carolina game, uh, Tyler. Um, Evan agreed about the, the seeding percentages. So, Let's let's go. Let's talk about that for just one second. So tomorrow they're playing Mississippi State. Um, it is commonly believed that Mississippi State is a tournament team now, based on their win today. Okay, so let's say that if Tennessee wins tomorrow, even if they lose on Saturday in the semifinals, I feel like they're still going to be a one seed. I could be wrong. But I think they would end up a one seed in that situation. If Tennessee loses tomorrow, that would be back to back losses. And there is such a thing as recency bias. Do you think Tennessee drops off the one seed line if they lose tomorrow? Russell, go ahead. I don't because I think everybody else is losing. Um, you know, Arizona got blasted by a really bad Southern Cal team the other night. Um, that that's going to hurt their strength of schedule and their their seating significantly. Um, Duke just lost to North Carolina State. Mm-hmm. Duke's out of the ACC tournament. That hurts North Carolina. That, that hurts <laughs> that hurts Duke's strength of schedule. So therefore, it hurts North Carolina strength of schedule. Um, I just you know Creighton just lost to Providence. Like the teams who might creep up and bump us off of one seed aren't winning. So 
I'm not concerned about it at all. I think we're already squarely a one, and I don't think it matters what happens tomorrow. Yeah, and to kind of tag along what he said, Tennessee's strength of schedule is so much higher than any of the competitive uh, perspective one seeds. Uh, I saw, you know, if you look at Arizona's strength of schedule versus Tennessee's strength of schedule but versus North Carolina's, uh, Tennessee wins. In every in every scenario, so I think yeah, even if even if Tennessee were to lose for some reason, I don't think they will. Uh, but I, but I think they do get a one simply because they played better competition and uh, they've won in, in most cases. And speaking of recency bias, they have won in Tuscaloosa, in Columbia, they beat Auburn. Uh, so you know those are all great wins recently. So agreed. Yeah. Um, Zach said, if we win, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Zach, <laughs> uh, JL, welcome JL. Good to have you, buddy. Uh, he said that he would think if we lost tomorrow that there's, we might drop off. Um, Zach said, Duke has been up and down all year. Uh, Carl said they hate the Vols though, would be the first number one seed ever. Uh, that's true. But I, I think I agree with Nick here and, and, and here's, Here's my take on this. If Tennessee loses tomorrow to what was considered to be a bubble team, and if, and this is a big if, if Carolina wins the ACC tournament, that is a Saturday championship game tournament. So those games count towards the seeding. So if... Carolina wins the ACC tournament. That means they would have been ACC regular season and tournament champion. And we lost head to head with them. And we lost head to head. That's a good point. A long time ago, though. That's very true. It was a long time ago. (laughs) I mean, that's Um, forever. Yeah. But if that happens, if we lose tomorrow and Carolina wins the ACC tournament, I can I can see a situation where they bump us down and put Carolina as that fourth number one seed. So if by some chance that happened, I would be fascinated to see how they handle that that bracket because that would mean Carolina's the four, we're the five, which means we'd be in the same region. Are they going <laughs> to send us both out west? Yeah, that's a good point. You're going to send two East Coast teams to the West Coast as a one and two seed? So then you got to wonder the committee's, if the, the committee's got some issues on their hands. Yeah. And then you got to wonder if, uh, if they, if they make Carolina that last four seed, would they drop us down, you know, move <laughs> Arizona as the two seed going out West and then drop us down. But I mean, I, they shouldn't. No, they can't do that. The numbers. Don't I just think North, that. I just think North Carolina's losses were so bad though. Like they lost to Georgia tech yep. and Syracuse. Yeah. And, and that's Clemson. recent. Like, like, yes, and, and they're all within the last month and a half. I don't – like, that just doesn't inspire me much uh, t- to me as a one as a prospective one seed, right? I mean, to me – now, again, I am wearing an orange tee on my shirt, but, uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, if, if you were giving me, me Tennessee's – yeah, if you were giving me yeah. Tennessee's recent wins versus North Carolina, I'm taking Tennessee's wins uh, yeah. every time. So that's yeah. you know, my, my take. Last month, they had a five-game stretch where they lost to Georgia Tech, Clemson, and Syracuse. Mm-hmm. But there is one thing that could end this and without any you know, potential theories of well, what if, <laughs> yeah. and that's if Tennessee wins tomorrow. Uh, they, sure, they, like, right. Tennessee, it, they can take care of business tomorrow. And if they do that, <laughs> then, then we're celebrating, you know. Um, Let's see. JL said he agrees with Carl. The national, you know, committee but might I, mess this over. But I'll go back to what I said at the beginning. I don't think we're losing tomorrow. I think we're a very different team than the team we played two months ago. I think we have a good identity now. We know who we are defensively. Hubbard's not going to score what he did the last time tomorrow. <laughs> They're going to switch up Santi and Jemai on him every chance they get. Those yeah. two guys are going to run him ragged. Yeah. And outside of him, I mean, if if Jonas just cancels out Tolu Smith, like I don't even need him to stop him. I just need him to both to have 14 or both of them to have 12. Um, if they just cancel each other out, we win this thing by 20. 
Yeah, I was about to say, and you know, like North Carolina today, they came out slow against Florida State. Florida State, you know, had the game tied for majority of the first half, and then in the second half, Florida State just lost their gas, and North Carolina showed their depth, and they didn't, you know, they flaunted their stars, and they won by twenty-five. I think I think it'll be the same picture tomorrow. It'll, you know, you may see a sluggish top seed come out uh, in the in the beginning, but I think I think Tennessee's depth wears them out eventually. Yeah. Carl said, I feel the seniors for the Vols won it all, especially after losing in Kentucky. That's going a lot of fire under my agree. Uh, I, just don't, said, I just don't see how the way they've been playing, the pace they play with, and how hard they play on defense, I just don't see how you can do it consistently in, for three games in three days. It's just asking a lot. Uh, JL said, we're going all the way, cutting down the nets. Uh, Zach said, nobody can beat us now, not even Purdue. <laughs> So Zach, he's like, he's, he's already, we've already won the SEC tournament in Zach's mind. He's, he's like, we're talking about NCAA tournament now. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be very surprised if we see Purdue before the final four. <laughs> yep. True. Agreed. Um, so, you know, y'all mentioned Jonas and, and I, as I think about tomorrow, I keep thinking about Tobe Awaka because he is a, he is playing completely different now than he was. I mean, let's be honest, even just a month and a half ago, uh, but especially the, the last time, this would have been, what, early early January when they played Mississippi State? Yeah, it was January 10th. All right, so Tobe is playing totally different than he was then. So I think he's the X factor tomorrow. If he comes in and plays well, gives him a lot of good minutes, gives Jonas some rest, uh, maybe they go with that two big lineup where they have both of them in the game at the same time, that – Oh, Zach, I'm sorry, Zach. I underestimated Zach. He said we've already won the national championship in his mind. <laughs> um, you know, I think that Jonas or, or Tobey could be the X factor tomorrow. What do you all think? What do, what do you what do you all think people aren't thinking of that will be a very important factor tomorrow? You can go ahead, Tyler. My oh, man, Russell put me on the spot. Um, I, I can take it. That. <laughs> No, um, I think Mississippi State likes to really slow it down, like play like real half court offense and defense. So if you notice, a lot of their wins have hovered in the sixty and seventy range. I think Tennessee would feel comfortable if they shot a lot of threes tomorrow and and won in the eighties range. At least they scored eighty. Uh, so I think in Tennessee historically, at least this year, has not fared well in games that are lower scoring. I think most of the losses have come on the. Yeah, you're right. We losing. Tyler, you froze on us. Shoot still the ball well. Oh, there he goes. I, I am sorry. Yeah. There um, you go. So for so for, so for Tennessee to have um, the ability to shoot well, um, while also being physical, so that there is a there is a um, two piecer there. I'll take Josiah. Um, the first time we played them, they don't really have a good matchup for him. And we tried to get him involved early. He just couldn't hit shots. He was one of eight mm. from the field. Uh, he was one of eight from the field. And after he, they realized he was totally off, they kind of went away from him. Um, but I think our coaches saw that there was really nobody on that other sideline that could guard him. He's a mass, he's a he's a significant mismatch for them. Um, they don't have a whole lot of those long kind of in between guys. They have true post players and true guards. They don't really have any tweeners. Um, so I think I think we'll probably go back to him early, try to get him going early um, because he can be the X factor. And like we've said from day one, we need a third guy. Like we need three people in double figures every night. And, yes. you know, he can he can be that guy if he's hitting. And I'll actually one up my answer uh, because, because something that Tennessee has that not every team has is playing in this tournament is experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of these guys have played in mm -hmm. this arena. They played for a championship in this arena and they've won a championship in this arena. I remember uh, the CBS broadcasting crew going through Tennessee's roster at the beginning versus Kentucky starting five. Tennessee had senior, senior, junior, junior, senior. Kentucky had freshman, 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 freshman. So I think Tennessee walks into the building 
with not just the number one seed, but I think they walk in with experience. They walk in with poise that the other teams may not have uh, playing in this building. So I think that, that also could be a factor. Um, you know, guys like Santi and Josiah, as Russell mentioned, uh, that have been here on the stage before. I think that's a fantastic point. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Jones said Meshack and Zakai's on-ball pressure. Those two things are his X factor. Uh, Carl makes a good point. He said, you know, all the games I've seen us lose, it's usually a combination of being us being really bad, not making shots, and the other team shooting out of their minds. And, and he said, and it still ends up close. Uh, well, like Kentucky or uh, was it Mississippi State the last time? Who was it that, that couldn't miss when we played them? No, I can't remember who it was. Um, we ended up losing that game. I can't remember who it was. Uh, JL said, even with the, the loss to Kentucky, I was glad to see how hard the Vols fought to the very end. Almost stole it from him. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Zach think, said, you have to look. Go ahead. I think if, if Shaq and Santi keep Hubbard under 15, or even at 15, I don't think Mississippi State can break 60. I, I, I think that he's the key. If you shut him down, there's not much else out there. For sure. Agreed. Uh, Zach said you have to look for others to make shots, so they have to guard them. So Dalton can get one on, you know, one or two people on him, if that makes sense. Absolutely. You know, you gotta you gotta have other folks making shots so that it takes some of the pressure away from Dalton. Absolutely. Um, Mina, like he said, I've noticed a lack of rebounding when we lose. Absolutely. She said that experience that Tyler was talking about is going to be a big factor. And Mr. Jones and Zach both got it right. That, that was, that's what I was thinking of. Texas A&M, when we lost to Texas A&M, they couldn't miss. Um, that, that's exactly what it was. Thank you. And just um, to kind of hit on my point, Tennessee and their losses scored 72 at Mississippi State. They scored 59 in a loss to South Carolina at home. They scored 69 in a loss at Texas A&M. And then you go all the way down to Kentucky which they were in the 60s for a large part of the game. And, you know, had it not been for the phantom run with 50 seconds left and a lot of on-ball pressure, I mean, they would have been in the, the low 70s at best. So, the, the, you know, scoring is huge uh, for this team to succeed, in my opinion. Absolutely. So let's go back to Carl's question at the beginning of the show. He said, is it better to exit the tournament early and get rest, or does the competitor and you say win it all? I mean, I think I'll go for, I think you want to win it all. I mean, that's just the competitor in you, but there are undeniably there, there is a benefit to, to winning one game. You have to win tomorrow. You have to like, that's, that's not an option. You got to win tomorrow to ensure a one seed. But Saturday, <laughs> um, I mean, if you lose, well, darn, uh, you still get, I mean, think about it like this. If, if you play on Saturday, every other conference except for the Big Ten <coughs> will finish their tournament Saturday. So if you play on Saturday and you, you end up with a Thursday game, if you play on Sunday, you're already one day shorter rest than potentially who you're playing if you now with tennessee they'll be you know hopefully a one seed so they'll have some mid-major from somewhere who probably finished their conference tournament on monday or tuesday of this week so they'll be on over a week's worth of rest and tennessee might be on four days worth of rest i don't think that's going to matter personally but um you know crazy things have happened uh in the tournament so there are certainly advantages to exiting early, but I think if you ask any person on that team, I think they're going to tell you, no, we want to be regular season and SEC tournament champs. What do y'all think? Same. I, I think every competitor wants to show up and win it all. Um, <laughs> I just, in the back of, the players will never say this, but in the back of the coaches' minds, there's definitely always going to be a, a mentality of, hmm, if we lose and go home, it's okay. This isn't the tournament that matters. Um, you know, so either way. What about you, Tom? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I know I, I know our staff well enough to know they are not thinking about anything but being there on Sunday afternoon, cutting down the nets <laughs> at about three o'clock Eastern time, right? Like that, like that is that is their mo. All the players are thinking that. Like, so I so don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying any of our players or coaches think this way, but from a health perspective, you have to think like if you play a Saturday, a Sunday game against a really physical Auburn team or a really physical Kentucky team that's really athletic and Dalton were to get hurt. I'm speaking hypotheticals here. Uh But that totally changes the dynamic of the NCAA tournament. All of a sudden, one seed Tennessee doesn't look as one seed anymore. And all of a sudden, a 16 seed is looking at Tennessee like, oh, they look really yummy because that's upset prime right there. So, so, I mean, from from a fan's perspective, yes, it's, I would say, advantageous to, to exit earlier. Uh, but, but our team does not feel that way. I know a hundred percent. So, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Yeah. I think players, that's a great point. Players never think that way. Coaches do. <laughs> they, they don't, they don't say it out loud, but they right. do. Yeah. Uh, Zach said, win it all. Uh, let's see. Mr. Jones said, win, win, win. Don't even let doubt creep in. You know, like he said, rest. <laughs> I like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Carl said, do y'all think as a team with coaches have talked about win or leave early? They're just talking about not winning. a chance. Not yeah. a chance. Not a chance. Uh, Zach said, it's better to go in hot than sitting and getting cold. <laughs> Unless you get hurt. But um, Mr. How, Jones said players. How, how does, let me respond to that. How does playing three games in three days and then sitting for four days at least keep you hot. I mean, it, it doesn't. You're in you're in a different gym. You're shooting with a different background. You're you're playing against a different opponent. You know, you might go from being guarded on Sunday by you know Zvon, Zvonimir Isevich, and then on Thursday you're playing some 16. Did he just make that up? He's just showing off that he can say okay. the dude from Kentucky's <laughs> name. He's showing off. No, he's seven feet tall. You're so right. you might go on Sunday from facing him and trying to shoot over his seven whatever wingspan to on thirty on Thursday playing a sixteen seed whose biggest guy might be six six. Yeah, and so it's not the same. You, there's no such thing. None. There is no such thing as. Oh, I've played this many games. I'm hot right now. It that doesn't exist. It's not real. Yeah, I'll give a real practical college basketball example. ETSU was the seventh seed in the SoCon tournament. They played four games in four days. Their final opponent was the one seed in the SoCon, Samford. Samford, if you don't know, they play a style of basketball called Bucky Ball. They shoot the three and they press on make or miss. ETSU yep. attempted thirty something free throws. They missed fifteen free throws in the championship game and they lost by like eight. Okay. So, so that, that is the fatigue we're talking about. Like, yep. like ETSU, had they played at their normal game and made their normal free throws in a championship game, they would have beat Sanford, but, but, but four games in four days and Sanford's press and turnovers and all the things it just doesn't happen. So, so I, I, I there, there undoubtedly is a, a, a fatigue aspect to, again, the, the routine, the, Sleeping in a hotel room. Uh, again, yeah. they're student athletes. They're still in classes while all this is going on. So there's just all these aspects to to, to this, and and it's tiring. It's tiring for us to talk about, much less for them yeah. to actually do it. So right. I've used this Girl. example. I've used this example before, and you know, baseball is a little different than basketball. But you know, I played against a university that was always in the national top ten. We all knew. When they got to the, they would win the regular season every year. They knew they would win a massive at large bid, national ranking. They would get to the conference tournament and tank it on purpose. It was a double elimination tournament. They'd intentionally lose the first two games. They'd rolled nine dudes out there that hadn't played all season just for the sole purpose of losing twice so they could get home early and rest. Um, you know, it, the, it's not, it's not the greatest way to think, but. That team also competed for a national championship almost every single year. So, you know, there was something to be said for getting home and resting. Uh, Carl was saying the same thing I was. He said, Rustin's a linguist. He's showing off. Probably got Nico's name first try. 
I was about to say, he's probably about to say Nico's name here in a minute. Too, Carl <laughs> yeah. beat me to it. The only, um, it's the only thing the English degree has ever done for me. <laughs> <laughs> Carl said, cool to know those kind of conversations don't occur with players and coaches. Wasn't sure how they handled that. Zach said, there's a reason why the phrase is, uh, that guy's hot, feed him the ball. During the game. During the game. Not when yet. the game <laughs> ends, when the game That's ends, it. these players literally go and get in cold baths. Okay? Because their bodies they, are so sore. Yes, they go get in cryogenic <laughs> chambers to freeze their muscles. There is no such thing as hot from game to game. Doesn't exist. Yeah, no. Mr. Jones said, there's a B. I am a believer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Jones said he got muscle memory. That's what uh, is why well, it's important to keep playing. Uh, Dester, welcome, Dester. Good to have you. He said, win it all. Win it all. Um, the, the folks did not like it when you mentioned a potential injury to Dalton if you keep playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I apologize for that bad voodoo. Uh, I, Mr. Said Jones. It, I said it Thursday night. It's, I mean, it's real. Three games in three days playing the physicality of the SEC with fatigue that sets in. It's you're, the more you play with less rest, the greater opportunity you have for injury. It's Which is real. the disadvantage to Tennessee being the one seed or Kentucky being the two seed. They're playing better teams at that stage of the tournament where they're at, where because they get the double bye. So they avoid playing the 12 right. and 13 and 14 seed. So, the con right. is, hey, you're going to play good teams from there on out. So, uh, JL said, knock on wood. <laughs> Mino yeah. Aggie said, uh, I'm sure they want to, I'm sure they want to last as long as possible. March Madness starts when it starts. So, rest is important. Uh, let's see. Some of the other comments came in. Uh, Zach said, we're going to have to agree to disagree on this. <laughs> uh, so, Carl again, said, again, I don't, I, I don't hope this happens at all. Okay, but Zach, how are you going to feel if on Sunday at 2.45 with three minutes left in the game, we're beating Kentucky by eight and Dalton rolls an ankle hmm. and and we win, win the SEC championship. Yay. Drop beam, drop stuff from the rafters, drop confetti, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but he's out for the first two to three games of the NCAA tournament, and we lose in the Sweet 16 because he's not playing. You still happy? <laughs> All I'll say is let Kentucky have their 87th tournament championship, and I want to be cutting the nets in Phoenix in about three weeks. That's, <laughs> that's what I want to be doing. Yep. Uh, Carl said it would be great if Oscar could get up early on some teams in the SEC tournament and go to the bench quick. That would be ideal. Uh, that would be wonderful. Going to be tough. Which is something else. What, which is something, well, yeah, go ahead. What, what tournament game have you watched in the last 24 hours where that got to happen? <laughs> yeah, it's a rarity for sure. Um, it'd be awesome if they could, but uh, let's see. He said, Zach's or, or no, uh, Dalton's a robot. It won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Evan asked a question earlier in the show and it's already 10 Oh five. So let's get to that question. Um, we spent too much time talking about vasectomies at the beginning. <laughs> Don't uh, so Evan said, did you guys have any thoughts on the college football playoffs going to 14 teams? Um, so so Evan, Evan has the logo that says, because the sec is stupid. It could easily be replaced with because the NCAA is stupid or the BCS is stupid. I do not, I, I do not understand why we have gone from four to 12 to 14. The NCAA has a tournament in place already at the FCS level where the top 16 teams who are ranked based on strength of schedule and record get ranked for the postseason and play a 16 team single elimination tournament. Why is this so hard? Just, isn't copy, it amazing? just copy what you already have. I've never the, had an FCS team complain. Oh, we got left out of the playoffs. No, no FCS program has ever said that. Like nobody, nobody, but for some reason we insist on making this just insanely complicated. I like, I, I don't get it. I, I really and, don't. I, I don't. 
And the argument I heard earlier was, well, we want, we don't want to hurt some of the mid tier bowl games. The more playoff games you have, the more bowls you can bring yeah. into the fray. Like this is yeah. just basic math. This isn't yeah. hard, yeah. Yeah. and the fact that they make it this hard is just mind blowing. Yeah. Uh, and Carl fourteen, said, you can't even like. There's not. There's not a rational. There's not a rational way to do a fourteen team bracket. Like you're gonna have weird buys all over the place. It. it None of it makes any sense. And can you imagine being team number 15 or 16 if you have an identical record and you have, like, one loss more or less than the, the number 14 team? Holy yeah. moly. Like, you talk about controversy. Like, you, uh, I don't get – I'm speechless. Speechless was the word that I that came to my mind when I read the notification. I was sitting in the Capital One Arena, and I got the ESPN notification saying, they've already decided to expand it again. And I'm like, we haven't even tried the 12 team. So how do we even know right. the 12 team is going to go, right? So, but, but we're already making decisions on stuff that we haven't even tried yet. So at this point, it's just a wash. And just so everybody knows, uh, nothing is technically official yet, but it sounds like tomorrow there's going to be an announcement that it will be official. Yeah. And it's supposed to probably start in 2026. So that would be... Uh, you know, this upcoming season, two seasons after that is when this would start. So we would have two seasons of the 12 team playoff. And then uh, that third year, it's going to 14 teams. Now, I will be very interested to see um, what ends up happening with who gets a buy, uh, which how many spots are reserved, not just for power four teams, because there are no more power five, it's power four. So I'll be pretty saying there'll be power three. <laughs> That's exactly right. What's interesting is okay, so let's go with down that train train of thought real quick because this isn't supposed to start until 2026. You know, they're already hinting, they're already hinting that by 2028 they're going to expand again. Well, by 2026 there won't be four conferences. There will no, be no. three. No chance. Yep. And so whatever is designed, <laughs> you know what? That'll be really interesting when they release the official like regulations, uh, criteria and stuff like that. Because obviously this will not be in that document, but all of us will be able to read between the lines in the yep. seating and, and how things are ranked to know what the NCAA thinks is going to happen in 2026. If they're expecting there to still be four power conferences or just three, like you'll be able to see by how many res reserve spots there are and automatic qualifiers there are. You'll be able to see by um, uh, you know, wh how many group of six schools get reserved spots you what will be really interesting is if the ACC or if the SEC and Big Ten are going to get two automatic qualifiers, which is what they are pushing for. Which so, remember, there's no there's no more divisions, so the mm -hmm. SEC could very well have five or six very good teams. And then at that yep. point, well, does it matter that the SEC has five or six really good teams and the Big Twelve has one? So. Are they going to try to equal it out amongst conferences? Like, so it's just a mess. Like, it's just, it's not going to be productive. So, you know, to, to Tyler, to your point a minute ago, you mentioned what about that 15th and 16th seed? Okay. So let's say, and, and, you know, here's the, here's the reality situation. The higher we get in numbers, you know, we're at 12 now and we're already talking about how it's really 11 because that 12th seed, that 12th automatic qualifiers for the highest ranked group of six school now. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it's, it's, uh, and you could even make a case that it's really just 10 guaranteed spots, but um, now we're talking about, okay, so if it goes to 14, then that's really just 13 or 12, depending on how many places they're reserving for the highest ranked group of six schools. So what if you're the overall number 13 seed in a 14 team playoff, and you don't get invited. 
because and, and, of, and, and liberty liberty is your is the replacement for your game exactly and, and, and liberty gets routed by oregon by 40 or whatever it is and you're like well man we could have done a whole lot better than that so yeah i think exactly. that's gonna be a recurring thing exactly it'll be fascinating uh, to see where they go with the conferences and how that plays in i mean what a world what if i had told you six months ago that the ACC would be teetering on the brink of self-destruction and the Big 12 would be a major player pushing the SEC and Big 10. I mean, a lot has changed in six months. Absolutely. Um, some of the comments that came through, Carl said, vasectomy, did not have that on my Volsboro's bingo card. <laughs> <laughs> Volsboro's uh, bingo. Can we, can we create that from the store? I think we need to. Let's actually. go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are so many good things we could put on that shirt. <laughs> um, Evan said they will increase again for the money. It's all about the money. You're exactly right. Uh, Mr. Jones said NCAA, who are they? They got the death penalty. <laughs> uh, let's see. Zach said nobody cares at this point. Tennessee will be there at the end anyways. Here's the deal. It, it, already at 12, the expectation is going to be for Tennessee to be in the 12-team playoff every year. Um, that's pretty much going to be the, the the standard for every SEC coach, except maybe Vanderbilt. And if they don't accomplish it, then they're going to get fired. Um, if it goes to 16 teams eventually, yeah, you better be in the playoff. That's that's how that's going to go down. Um, Evan said college football is turning into college basketballs. Mr. Jones said so they're going to put 64 teams in there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh Zach said, NCAA math, one plus one equals three. Um, Pretty much in the rankings and and who's going to be allowed in. Mr. Jones said it'll be January madness. (laughs) Tony said, hey, welcome, Tony. Good to have you. He said it should be 18 playoff. No buys would have been plenty. That would have been plenty enough for everybody. Um, And you're right. That seems very simple and fair. Um, Only if they they just take the top eight, legitimate top eight. If they do this no automatic craziness, qualifiers. yeah. Well, and no random at large bid for the best group of six school. Like yes. that junk, that junk's gotta go. Yeah. JL said they, they're intentionally providing themselves some gray area to work in. I agree with that. That is that's probably spot on. Um Dester said just leave it at 12 teams, stop changing everything. Um Carl said, what if a team wins first round but loses their starting quarterback? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Mino Likey makes a fantastic point. She said, that's going to wreak havoc with the early week surgery schedules. So, I mean, like that, the early weeks in the season, you know, teams are just playing mid majors just to get a W. Uh, I guarantee you, if you know, this is the case. It's just more incentive for the SEC to remain at eight games in conference instead of going to a nine game conference schedule because you want teams in the college football playoff. And if you schedule mid majors in the beginning of the season, then you're more likely to have more teams in the playoff. So it's, it's incentive to stay at eight game uh, SEC schedule. Uh, Mr. Jones said it's going to be the SEC North, South, East, and West. <laughs> possible evan said once again sec and big 10 equals afc nfc they're controlling the the college football landscape it it, it will be yeah at some point uh let's see Uh, mr jones said i didn't think the ncaa will be relevant the big 10 sec union will probably oversee the happenings um so this is interesting Evan said the regular season will not matter as much. Uh, it's still going to matter to get you to the playoff. You might be able to lose a game and still make it in, depending on your strength of schedule. But that is that regular season will still matter to get you to it. That's that's for sure. Uh, Tony said he's hoping the hey, it was a baseball comment. Uh, but hope the baseballs can beat the Alabama Crimson Tide this weekend. They have a three game series tomorrow. Uh, Tyler and I were talking about that earlier. So the Lady Vols host to Missouri this weekend. Uh, Tennessee goes to Tuscaloosa. So tomorrow you have 
men's basketball at one o'clock, softball at six o'clock, baseball at seven o'clock. Um, let's see. Dester said, stop punching the loser of conference championship game. They're second best in their conference. So it should automatically be in playoffs. I mean, if it's the big 10 or sec, you can make a case, but even then if, if the big 10 still has divisions, which I don't know if they will next year or not, but if they do and Iowa ends up being the second best team, then you still have an issue there. Um, you know, technically, Tennessee beat the second best team in the Big Ten in their conference or their bowl game this year. They didn't. They played Iowa. The second best mm -hmm. team was Ohio State. But, I mean, that's the way it could look. Heaven said the BCS looks better and better each year. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Jones said, are the refs going to be out to get us because of the lawsuit on the NCAA? <laughs> I don't, I don't think so. I hope not at least. <laughs> yeah. Contrary to popular belief, the officials don't have anything against Tennessee. They're just really bad at their job. In most <laughs> cases. Um, and, uh, yeah, and um, obviously that'll be on full display. I'm sure wrestling can give you, give you some commentary on that. Well, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. The refs are also paid by the conference, not the NCAA. Mm -hmm. Even yeah. even at the NCAA tournament, they have an allotment per game. And if refs are selected to officiate in the NCAA tournament, the NCAA actually sends that money to the conference with their tournament royalty checks, and then the conference pays the officials. So even at the NCAA tournament, they're still paid by the conference. Fun fact that a lot of people don't know, um, if you are one of the best officials in America, and you get selected to do the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, any round of the NCAA tournament, you are considered a general contractor and you have to pay for your own travel. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Think about that. The multi-hundred million dollar tournament <laughs> insane. makes the referees pay to travel to officiate the game. Oh my goodness. That is insane, but the officials are compensated pretty well for for two hours of their time. I will say, I'm not, I'm not saying so. that that's wrong, but I'm but or right rather, but but they, but they are they are compensated pretty pretty well. Yeah, well. Hopefully, they're making that up in what they pay them. Well, I think there's even some discrepancy in that. Like, I think people sure. have this idea of what they get paid, but do you know what? I mean, they've already announced this year's allocations. Do you know what they get paid for a first round officiating game? I'm not saying no. One thousand dollars. That okay. is not much. No, not if you have to fly there. Let, uh, you know, let's yeah. say, you know, if you even if you find a cheap flight, you're probably at four hundred out of pocket already. If you mm -hmm. got to get a hotel room, <laughs> if you if you've got to get a hotel room, that's another hundred and fifty <laughs> to two hundred. I mean, it's it's yeah. crazy. By the time they ref the game, they're making like two hundred, three hundred bucks. So Carl said he's with Rustin on the Big 12. It looked like they were crashing and burning, and now they're strong and the ACC's crashing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's not good for the ACC when multiple institutions in your conference reveal that they have secretly been trying to exit your conference <laughs> uh, for multiple years, and they're actually willing to pay the fine to leave your conference. That is never a good sign. <laughs> it's definitely not the beacon of health for a conference, for sure. Um. Let's see. Uh, Carl agreed with your assessment of the officials, Tyler. He said they are bad. <laughs> the only ones worse are the women's refs. Holy cow. Like they. Oh, my goodness. I, there's Lord sometimes I'm watching women's college basketball and I'm like, where did they find these people? Like, were they out uh, in the yeah. parking lot going, hey, who wants to try this out? Um, I mean, it's unbelievable how bad they are. Uh, Rustin Tyler agreed with you, he, or Tony agreed with you. He said he, you know, when he mentioned the eighteen playoff, just take the take the top eight teams, you know, yeah. rank them, take the top eight, forget uh, automatic qualifiers, just take the top eight teams, and I, it would be hard to argue with that. Uh, I mean, that that would be that would be really hard to argue against. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, Dester said that's so wrong that they don't pay for travel. Carl makes a good point. He said, is, you know, this is interesting. We can make players employees, but the officials, which the game can hinge on, are subcontractors. Uh, here's, here's a really crazy one. Okay, so they've announced the, the allotments for every round, 
so the the round of 64 and the round of 32 a thousand bucks a game the sweet 16 and elite eight fourteen hundred dollars a game the final four in the national championship two thousand dollars a game no, so that's right. there's no so, way they, that's that's not that's not fair yeah so the national championship is where phoenix phoenix, phoenix. so if i'm the best official in the sec and i live in naples florida i've got to get on a plane and fly across the country that's going to be a six seven eight hundred dollar flight um i'm gonna have to pay obscene amounts of money for a hotel room because it's the final four Yep. And and I'm going to get paid $2,000 for all that. I may not actually make money on that deal. I might lose mm-hmm. money calling the final four. Yep. Uh, you know, like you said, they should have travel uh, in per diem. They should. I agree. And they get none of that. Mr. Jones mm-hmm. said they make their money taking bribes. <laughs> 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 nice. Nice. Uh Carl said round trip too. That's that's not squat. Absolutely. No, it's not. It's terrible. Especially but, in the biggest stage of your game. I mean, like that should be I mean, there's no telling the um team, but bajillion amounts of dollars that the NCAA's making oh, that weekend. When the tournament's over, they'll send every conference royalty checks and like the SEC and Big Ten, theirs will be in the millions. It's like how do you how do you quantify this? Yep. Well, Tyler, man, we appreciate you joining us tonight so much. Thank you so much. I'm sorry we kept you till 1023, but this has been fun. I know. Um, it was Don't a pleasure worries. talking vasectomies with you. <laughs> I'm about to say, the, it's the vols and the vasectomies. That's what I'm talking about. The vols <laughs> and the vasectomies. The VVs. <laughs> it, is it bad on that comment up earlier about surgeries? The first surgery I thought about was a vasectomy. It was talking about like... <laughs> player surgeries and i thought what is she talking about a regular season vasectomy is that like is that what she is that's that was my first thought and i was like wait where did we, where did we go with that <laughs> <laughs> so so rustin has done his job with pr tonight for sure and helping out the medical profession by the way i don't by the way i own an insurance company so if you need health and safety, <laughs> um, i'd be more than happy to help you <laughs> Carl said, "Thanks, Tyler. Absolutely. Mino, you know, like he said, thank Tyler. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, um, thank you guys for tuning in. You guys are what makes the show what it is. Uh, hey, Zach, you said, oh uh, man, <laughs> Zach, you got to tell us what happened to you, man. You said that you you had some news for us, so you got to tell us what happened. I apologize. I I starred that comment to come back to it, and then I I forgot to. That's my bad." Uh, you said so. I have some good news and some bad news to share, if I can. <laughs> so let us know. Let us know, Zach. Um. Uh, Dester said, "Wait, do we need to rethink your guess? Uh, guess about what? I'm I'm lost. Y'all help me out. I don't I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, me like he said, this has been a blast. Uh." I'm not going to put what Mr. Jones said on the, on the screen. Oh, my, oh my goodness. That was the last Zach. One. That is news. <laughs> well, speaking of vasectomies. Yeah, no kidding. But, um, <laughs> does she know you're alive? <laughs> well, if she doesn't, the entire Vol Bros Nation knows. Uh, and now a uh, HIV AIDS awareness person is blowing up our comments. Uh, oh, that's no. interesting. Well, uh, Rustin, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? Was, was some <laughs> algorithm like searching for the word vasectomy and then they found <laughs> us? Is that what's going on? Hey, hey, look, it's three dudes at 1025 Eastern. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a perfect opportunity to talk about stopping AIDS. <laughs> um, uh, man, you never know what you're going to get on the Volvers. The spammers are in rare form. That's um, uh, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Mr. Jones says, "Does Vescovy have a vasectomy?" Oh, more oh, Lord. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well played. Well played. Uh, um. 
Zach Zach said he may he may have uh, made some bad choices there. Um, well, Zach, uh, I hope you are a fantastic father. I'm sure you will be. Uh, you're a good guy, Zach. So I hope that you're uh, you're a nice dude. So I hope that you're uh, a, a great um, great great father. Um, we hope that everything goes well as far as uh, keeping everybody healthy. Um, but uh, I hope all the things work out as for um, the logistics of navigating that with this particular lady. Um, she seems to be an interesting lady. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think I need a, a test to prove it's legitimate. If y'all were yeah. She's been known to lie Since... about things, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> Since... Since we all thought you were dead. Um, yeah. Probably, yeah. probably a good idea to get that checked. She's been known to lie. So I would... <laughs> I hope everything goes well for you, Zach. I really do, man. Uh, Carl said, I have two sons, greatest mistakes I've ever made. <laughs> um, hopefully they're not watching, Carl. Uh, they, <laughs> uh, the, they might. Uh, uh, it's like a backhanded compliment a little bit. <laughs> um uh, Mina, like you said, is this really Zach? <laughs> Quality question. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's fair. Carl said they love their. I'm glad, Carl. I'm glad. Yeah, and Zach said it's him. Um, but how do we really know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we love you too, Carl. We love you too, man. Uh, you're you're the man. Uh, we love having you on here, Zach. We love you too, buddy, and we hope that everything works out for you. Um. We really do. Uh, uh, we really do appreciate everybody joining us tonight. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Tyler, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for giving us a little behind the scenes of what's going on right now. Uh, you've been there, done that. You've been with Rick Barnes, a Rick Barnes coach team at a SEC tournament. So uh, you, you've been there. You, you know what's happening even tonight, uh, you know, tomorrow morning, what they'll be doing. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully the tomorrow, you know, they get the early game. Hopefully that benefits Tennessee, uh, especially if they win tomorrow, uh, surely that would benefit them on Saturday because they would have more rest than the team that they will be playing. Uh, who's Auburn got? I can't remember who they got. South Carolina. South They're playing South Carolina. And that's okay, a so, very intriguing game. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, if South Carolina beats Auburn tomorrow, that would you surely got to think that really favors Tennessee in a semifinal game because South Carolina oh, would gosh, be playing yeah. Yeah. three games in three days. That's brutal, especially after playing Auburn, who's just going to get up and down the court and run 10 guys on and off the court. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, surely that's got to help them. Um, <laughs> um, you know, like he said, Zach, I'm sure you weren't part of the Google stat. <laughs> for the the week leading into the uh the tournament um go big orange <laughs> mr jones said go big orange hopefully vasectomy starts hitting some threes yeah i hope so oh, too gosh. man uh, he's got a, uh he, he's got a that is one thing that as we end our show tonight that everyone can agree on yeah. santiago vescovy has to look to shoot the ball Oh, yeah, when he yeah. when he gets the opportunities, he cannot be passive. He the 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 hope going into this season was that we have two legit scores on the court in our starting five and connect and Vescovy. He has to become that guy that everybody knows he can be during this tournament and and during the especially during the NCAA tournament. Um. <laughs> Carl's, Carl's comment, man. That's that's good. Carl, Carl said March Madness SEC tournament vasectomies and AIDS plus babies. This is a cross between Sports Center and an episode of Mari. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's great. Um <laughs> we're descending into anarchy. All yeah, right. So say, yeah. um uh this has been a blast. Uh <laughs> Just to wrap up, 
just because everybody needs to kind of pay attention to conference tournaments. There are three top 25 teams playing right now in their conference tournaments. All three are losing. Mm. Hmm. And who are those just while I'm scrolling to it? Uh, Marquette, um, Baylor, and Nevada. Hmm. So Zach just called so, a shot. Don't uh, don't Zach, put a whole lot of stock in conference tournaments. Zach said, "Get out of here, go big orange." Vols ninety four, Mississippi State seventy two. Uh, that will be a heck of a game if they can pull that off. I would love that. Uh, that would be. Um, let's hope the Vols score ninety four points. Let's hope they do. I don't think they will, but let's hope they do. Uh, I think they'll get in the eighties. I really do. I think it'll be. Like if I had to pick a score, I'm going to say like 86 to 78, kind of that kind of thing. Uh, I think it'll be that, that that type of game. I think it'll actually be pretty close late, and Tennessee makes free throws down the stretch to pull pull ahead and win. Uh, uh, Carl said Vols 86, Mississippi State 63. Um, there you go. All right. Uh, well, Tyler, we appreciate you, man. We really do. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys. We appreciate your insight. Uh, respect you, man. Love your insight. So uh, we hope everybody has a great day tomorrow. Huge day for Tennessee athletics. Tennessee men's basketball, 1 o'clock. Softball, 6 o'clock. Baseball, 7 o'clock. Uh, huge day. Go Vols. We hope it's three wins tomorrow. That's what we're hoping for, three wins. Uh, so we hope everybody has a great evening. Uh, Mina, like he said, 87, 84 Vols. That's, that's, that's a good pick, actually. I like that. Uh, Mr. Jones said, no way. <laughs> he said Vols 101, Mississippi State 45. I would love that. I, it's not going to happen, but I would love it. Uh, Carl said, thanks so much, guys. And Tyler, you gave me a round of applause, man. Uh, Mina, like he said, go Vols, absolutely. Uh, we appreciate everybody. Uh, we hope everybody has a great, great evening. And we're going to end with the basketball outro since it's SEC tournament time. So good night, everybody. We hope all of you have a great day tomorrow. Go Vols, baby.